Hi everyone, welcome to the talk about biology. So in this series, I will attempt to try to interest you in it and maybe even teach you some things. And this talk today will be about biology and specifically about viruses. And can I tell you that it's not just about biology because later on the week, we will also create one about maths, physics and chemistry. So let's get on with it. So about viruses, um, viruses, they are considered dead. They're on the bridge because they're not considered dead or alive because it does not grow since it stays its shape and it needs to infect others just to live and it does not secrete anything like bacteria or humans do. But um, can I just say that yesterday we made um, a topic about the immune system and listen to that one if you didn't see it. So about viruses, like here's the life cycle of a virus. So what happens is that when there's a virus, let's say it's the influenza virus in this case, and then there's a cell because influenza is something called a respiratory virus like COVID, it will, it will infect an epithelial cell. So basically they infect the same kinds of cells, but COVID is deadlier because it spreads more and it's because it likes to have a more sneaky approach to it. So the cell eats it from phagocytosis, but the cell does not know about the virus being something bad. And then once it eats it, the virus will begin to start doing the bad thing. So it happens that the virus will have DNA right here, DNA or RNA. And then the DNA and RNA will enter the nucleus to copy it. But if you don't know what DNA or RNA is, I'll explain. It's like the genetic code for life because you might you may write code in like Python, in C sharp, but the genetic code for life is DNA because it tells what color your eyes can be, it tells how fast you can be, it tells how tall you're gonna be. Because actually st studies have shown that becoming taller isn't actually about um, eating healthy food. It's actually from your gene. So we can call that the genetic code that's implemented to you as soon as you were born. So after the viral um, mRNA, mRNA is like RNA, and then it's used in the nucleus to make viral proteins. And viral proteins are really bad because they can construct new viruses. So that's a picture of the original virus. You can see some of the RNA in there. And that's a picture of the new viruses. So what happens is when the proteins come, the proteins will clump together to form a new virus. And then it's going to repeat and repeat and repeat using the cell's resources. And it will stop. If there's too much pressure, then the cell will explode, releasing lots of viruses. And then the chain will continue again. So we can technically put an arrow again just to make it like that. And that's the life cycle of a virus just like the life cycle of a butterfly it can fail at any point maybe that um it's stopped by the immune system before it so that's what makes viruses a really a really good target because we can attack it in any one of these things but what makes viruses really deadly is because it can infect and kill lots of cells because Viruses have the ability to replicate with the more cells they meet and actually um, the symptoms or how bad you are sick um, is based on how much cells it meets, like on here. Oh, I have two again. So when you have um, influenza virus, um, I'm going to call it type 1, they're all the same. The DNA and R or RNA is the same. And then type 1 only encounters, let's say, um, 1,000 cells, okay? So how much do you think it would be? Do you think that there would be quite a lot of them? Of course there'd be quite a lot because, like, it goes exponentially because it can start off with one influenza virus and then it infects a cell only one cell and then it jumps up to like a hundred and then that might jump up to ten thousand and it might get around two things two different things so one thousand cells were infected by viruses so what's the number of viruses after this so um let's assume that it was um 
V1 because like virus number one. Now there's um, um, T2 and that was exposed to a million cells. And then if it was exposed to a million cells, then the viruses had more chances to replicate. And that's what made viruses so deadly. But even bacteria can be deadly because back in the days when we stopped using antibiotics, we actually were really vulnerable to bacteria because they could infect your heart. And even if a few bacteria were in you, then it would be really dangerous or even fatal. And can I talk about this, this virus? I mean, it's a bacteria called tuberculosis. And then it was very, very, very bad. And then there's a story about something called penicillin. And penicillin was produced by this fungus that someone found is Professor Alexander Fleming. And then he found that when these spores landed in his Petri dish, a Petri dish is where you put bacteria, then it turned out that the bacteria died. And that's because the penicillin, which is made by the fungus, actually killed the bacteria. And then when he studied that, he shared his um, discovery to the world. And then they started using penicillin to kill bacteria. But actually, this is actually becoming bad because there's going to be these bacteria and bacteria can mutate. You don't make tuberculosis and it stays like that. They mutate like how COVID mutates. Bacteria can also mutate. So when bacteria mutates, it has a chance that, that, that it will become immune to an antibiotic, like penicillin. Imagine if there was this bacteria and then it had been exposed to enough penicillin and then it duplicated into another bacteria and then that bacteria had a faulty gene and that faulty gene actually gave him immunity to penicillin and actually bacteria can can share immunity because there's something called a plasmid so if i run that out inside a bacteria there are two main things of storing um dna or rna there's going to be a giant chromosome and that giant chromosome is like the chromosomes in our cells. But there's also something new, something called a plasmid. And plasmids, they just float around. And that's actually to share really good genetic codes. Like imagine if there was a, bac a bacteria who had become immune to penicillin. If it met up with other bacteria, then it could spread the platelets. I mean, spread the, um, the what's that? The, the the DNAs in these and then to other different bacteria so that's how immunity can spread across it so that's why we need to develop more antibiotics or or start becoming more responsible in terms of it because in some countries they have no antibiotics and there's a huge gap because in some countries antibiotics are taken because like your cold or fever is really annoying and then they just take it to to go away but actually that's how disaster happens it's because the bacteria can mutate through the population and if you don't start being responsible now then you won't save the world so what we need to do is we need to stop using antibiotics if you don't need it use antibiotics the exact amount your doctor says okay just listen to your doctor and help the world get immune to antibiotic resistance. So about the viruses, um, there are many different kinds of viruses and there's something um, in here, I'd say there are four stages. Let me explain them before I end. So there's the first stage and that first stage is when the, like in a bacteria infection, then the, in the first stage, it will start multiplying and it tries to hide from the immune system, acting like normal. And then in the second stage, you it will start growing more and more and more. And then it will start taking more space. And then in that stage, you might start feeling 
fever or sickness or you might start feeling hot and that's completely normal because some of your immune system's cells have already noticed this and then there's a third phase and it's the invasion phase and when it happens then the bacteria will try to fight against it releasing toxins but usually the immune system deals with that and then the fourth and final phase is let's say the best phase because you have already beaten it is because when you start recovering but it's not always that good because sometimes there might be some few levels of bacteria that might have been left over but have been hiding and then in some time they might grow again so it's very important to not use antibiotics because the antibiotics can make them hide from it also so i think that's it for the life cycle of a virus and maybe i could go into more about bacteria and we could do lots of immunology but i'm planning next time maybe we could do about cells number three